Uh, and that was right off, off the heels of, you know, of the, of, you know, the, the first round of phylloxera. We never win those rounds of phylloxera, I don't know why. Uh, and, then, and then right after that, of course, you know, and I blame, I blame all of you. Can I just, can we talk politics just for a second? <laughs> I dare you. You know, the, you know, the British sent all the criminals to Australia. So it's like a really fun place, right? <laughs> and they sent all the religious crazies to the <laughs> So, you know, that's, that's how you get this thing called prohibition, <laughs> where you're not supposed to drink. I mean, that's just insane. Yeah, but listen, we gave you our language. Look what you did to it. Uh, <laughs> are we even? <laughs> so, you also shot Levin. <laughs> 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 How did we get there? <laughs> How did I just step <laughs> So anyway, prohibition, prohibition. Yeah, let's get on to prohibition. <laughs> The prohibition ended in 1933, and then of course we were in the middle of depression. And then we had the war, and then we had commodity pricing for for grapes uh, right after the war. So it didn't matter where you grew; pretty much what you wanted was tonnage, right? If, if it was all going to cost the same, whether it was Bakersfield or, or, or Santa Helena, it really didn't matter. So it really wasn't until sort of the late 50s and early 60s that anybody anybody kind of woke up and said, "Gee, you know, I think I'd like to be a winemaker." And nobody even really knew what that was, right? Everybody was drinking Moscow Mule. It was fabulous. <laughs> so, uh, you know, then what do you do if you don't have, if you've lost this generations of, 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 of history, and you don't really, you know, and, and you've got this piece of dirt that you know kind of vaguely used to be in vines, but you weren't sure what kind, and now it was in walnut trees, you know, what do you do, right? And what we did is we turned to our university. Uh, UC Davis, and we said, "Okay, guys, you, you're the experts. What are we? What are we supposed to plan?" And UC Davis came out to Stag's Leap and took a look, look around. And said, it's too cold. It's really, really cold. So, you know, Riesling, Gewürztraminer, Chardonnay. This is what you should be planning in Stag's Leap. And so that's what they did. So this notion in 1963 that Nathan Fay would put Cabernet in Stag's Leap was just kind of crazy. And the only reason he did it was because this little Italian guy named Bob and Dobby, who was working at his family's winery called Charles Krug and was shooting off his mouth, right? He was wandering all over the valley telling people, we don't have enough Cabernet in this place, and I'll pay you more if you plant it. And that, my friends, is terroir. <laughs> you get paid more, you're going to put it in the ground. <laughs> so that's what Nathan did in 1963, and Dick Stelsner followed him in 1965, and Harry C. followed Dick in 1968. Quite fortunately, I think, for all of us in Sags Leap, and Pritchard Hill, and, and Childs Valley, and Coombsville, Harry was a cheapskate. So he went to Dick Peterson, who was running Bully Vineyards at the time, which had, you know, was known as sort of the, gr the great vineyard, you know, BV6, and he, he borrowed some, some cuttings, he planted three acres, and over the next ten years, he used that original planting and the best cuttings off of that original planting to plant additional cavern. And eventually, um, kind of by accident, he created uh, our very own mutation of cavern. Uh, which UC Davis recognized in the early 90s as a California Heritage clone. It's UCD30 if you want to order it on the Plant Material website, UC Davis. And it is called the Silverado clone. It's our very own clone that actually developed on our site in the, in the late 60s and early 70s. And that's what you're tasting in Solo. Solo is not a blend. Uh, unlike the AO7 uh, Estate, which is, which is obviously the four varietals we talked about in the two vineyards, uh, with a little bit of of the Davis station thrown in. Solo is just Cabernet. It's just from our from our, our Stagsley branch. And it is sort of a record of that historic vineyard and and this historic clone that developed in Stagsley. And that's a, a little bit about the wines on the table. Questions? Oh. <laughs> Comments? I just go you only produce small amounts. I think that's a good <laughs> 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 Well, well with that, let's tuck into wine. Cheers. <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, this is my, this is, this is my,